Hello everybody. Today we're going to do my top 10 Genesis games, so let's get started. The very first at number 10 is Spider-Man, which is also sometimes called Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. Depends on who you ask, but mine is just plain old Spider-Man. And the reason why I like this game is because I really dig Spider-Man. This is a classic platformer, side-scroller. You have good bosses that challenge you, but don't overdo it. And your main villain is the Kingpin. I like when they had one villain until they got a better, you know, style going. This isn't overwhelming you. You don't have to worry about too many villains. You have to worry about Venom, Kingpin, and you have to worry about your lady love. You have to save her. So I enjoyed this style. I love this game. If you ever have it, find it, check it out. It's definitely worth your time. Now at number nine is a game that I was gifted by Zombie. And this is Power Rangers, the fighting style game. Now this is their answer to Power Rangers. We had the Super Nintendo one, which is also on the top 10 for Super Nintendo. And then we had this one. This is all the villains you had from the Super Nintendo version, but everything was just you battle and you fight. You don't have putties, you don't have a beat-em-up, you don't have side-scrolling beat-em-ups. You literally just battle each boss and you go through and get to the next part. I really enjoyed the simplistic feel of it. You have classic Power Rangers. I can never get enough Power Rangers. Any game that ever has been made by Power Rangers, I try it. Not all of them are great, but this is definitely on my list. At number eight is another classic game that I really dig, and that is Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego? And you're saying to yourself, a Carmen Sandiego game? Why? A couple of reasons. I love Carmen Sandiego, always been a staple. I always played the PC version, any version I could find. I got the Nintendo version over here from Retro Mikey. And I love that they were packed in just like a collector's edition. You got an awesome manual you could put your notes in. You got different things that would help you solve every puzzle. There was multiple style of characters that you had to deal with. You got notes, you got different things. and in turn you learn stuff now yes i know some people don't like to learn but for me i really dug it because at the time i wasn't traveling anywhere my little self was stuck in a bubble and it wasn't a bad thing because i stayed safe but i wanted to see the world and so this helped me see the world through the eyes of carmen and i had to find her now i dig this this is my 80s self really happy about this if you ever find a carmen san diego game there's multiple versions of Carmen San Diego. You can try the Super Nintendo, Nintendo, whatever you want to try. Definitely grab one. They are good and golden forever replay value. You will never get bored with this one. At number seven is a Disney game that I really dug when I finally got to be able to beat it, and that is Pocahontas. This is a game that takes spirit animals. You have different ways to go through the level. You have to sneak through, which again, I don't like sneak games, stealth games, but this is a game that I was okay with because I knew the story, the plot from the movie. So I took that and utilized that to my knowledge and I got to go through and try to get to John Smith to save him from your family because both sides are battling in a war. And so you're trying to stop the war, you're trying to save John Smith and you're helping yourself through with your little creature companions, which are also cute, by the way. Definitely play this game if you haven't. Uh, it's going to take you a little bit of learning curve, but once you get past the learning curve, you'll definitely have a good time. The next game on the list is a classic sports game. One of the few that's going to make the list. And the reason why is this because Charles Barkley's on it. Shut up and jam. You have seven cities to deal with. You have no refs like the last time. And you have such a gritty way. I, I do like NBA Jam. I do like that style. But I do sometimes need to be able to play in the streets and not have to worry about if I'm giving a foul to somebody. You knock somebody down, you get back up. You move on, you keep going with the game, but also you can get knocked down and damaged. And so you have tournament mode if you want to play that. I really dug this game and I can play it multiple times. I have popped it in every now and then and played it on my clone console, but definitely worth a try. If you've never played Shut Up and Jam, you're going to enjoy it because so classic. It's so good. 
At number five is a game that I didn't even know about for a long time until somebody said in the comment section, how have you not played this game before? And that is Pirates of Dark Waters. This is a classic cartoon. I had the figures. I was always Ren whenever I played this game for both versions. There is a Super Nintendo version, but it's slightly different. So choose your choice. I, I like both of them, but in different ways. But this one's a little bit higher for when it comes to Genesis, but there's so many classic games on the Super Nintendo that that's why the other one's going to drop down a little bit lower. But this is a game that you take your classic pirates, you have to go in and stop the evil bad guy, and you have multiple levels you platform through. It is a little difficult at the very end, but if you just challenge yourself, learn the pattern of every level, you will get it, you will figure it out. And I enjoy the endings of these games. You always get to see the ending, but sadly there was no second, third season of this show. So you kind of just have to keep playing the game to get the feel of the classic back in the day vibes from the show. So hopefully me keep talking about Pirates of Dark Waters will get us a reboot or something. Please, anybody, does who, who owns the rights to this? Let's get this going again. Fourth on the list is an arcade classic that I play all the time and I enjoy. And that's because it's got music in it and you use the music as a weapon. And that is Revolution with Aerosmith. I love this arcade game. Anytime I see it in the arcades, I just go over there, gravitate towards it and I play it because it's a funny concept. I didn't think you could think of like a shooter with music and you have multiple things that you have to factor in. And I enjoy it. I dig it. Now, if you ever find this, it's not going to be unlimited credits, but still, it's got the arcade feel to it. So definitely try this one. You're going to enjoy it. Now, I will say, if you don't like Aerosmith, just like the other ones that have Aerosmith in it, you're not going to like this. It's literally all Aerosmith, the songs, everything like that. So definitely <laughs> heed a warning if you're not into their music. You won't like this game. Number three is Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, because it's the classic. I remember seeing it being played by my uncle and multiple people. I loved just popping it in and seeing how fast I can go through the levels. It's classic Sonic. I, I know everybody's going to pick two, three, but for me, it's one because I have memories with my family. I have memories with my buddies who had the Genesis back in the day. And it's just a good time, a game that I can always go to. I do play it whenever I find it. I play it online. I play it on an emulator. It's always one that I go to. It's like kind of like a Tetris. I can just pop it in for a little bit, play it while I'm wasting time, and then move on to the next game. But I have a great time with Sonic, and he will always be on my list. At number two is Mortal Kombat, the original. Now, the reason why I chose Mortal Kombat for the Genesis is because you didn't have to pop in a code to play and get the blood and the gore. So, for those who don't know, if you ever play Mortal Kombat on the Super Nintendo, you have to pop in a code to be able to get the blood and gore that you have just on the Genesis version, on the Game Gear version. You don't have to worry about it. Like, you literally just go through. I don't know why Nintendo decided to take out the blood unless you had a code. It was kind of annoying, but after that, they realized what they did, and they're like, ah, yeah, you can just have all the blood you want. So, I like Mortal Kombat. It's a classic game for me. It will always be on my list, because it's one of those fighters that it caused a riot, it caused a chaos, but really did it deserve it? Not really, because at the end of the day, it's one of those games where, unless you actually do the fatalities, you really didn't get that much gore. I mean, unless you had the pit, you... What? Like, like this is not going to stop a kid from doing something if they really wanted to. I feel like violence in video games don't mesh. They just help you escape from reality. It's not that big of a deal. So, to all the people that had tried to ban it in the past, keep going. Play Mortal Kombat. Stop them from taking away our games and censoring them. There is number one, and it's going to be Streets of Rage 2. Now you're saying to yourself, why Streets of Rage 2? And that's because me and Chris James were trying for, I don't know how many months to finally beat it together because we have friendly fire in this game and we kept 
just suplexing each other all the time. And finally, we got a good run going and we're like, I think we can do it. I think we could finally get to the point where we are not going to suplex each other. I, we, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we got this. And at that moment, I knew it was happening. We were going to finish the final run. When you got to the final boss and you went all the way to the elevator, I was like, this is dope. We're going to beat the game. And it's extra special because it's a buddy. We did a buddy beat the game. And I just love times where I have a game and I finished it with a friend. So definitely on the top of my list. This is a game that if I ever get like the nice crisp clean copy of it, I will get it. But I'm not going to pay an exorbitant amount of money to get it. But hopefully one day. There you have it everybody. There is my top 10 for Genesis. Let me know what is your top 10 for Genesis. If you don't have a top 10, it's too difficult. List off a couple games that you always go to. What's your go-to's for Genesis? Come on, let me know in the comments below. If you're new, please consider subscribing. And always, before you roll out, hit the like button because it helps out the algorithm. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal She's here, she's playing games. Linda the gamer gal. She's here, she's playing games too.